So you want to know all about warming up and specifically how to warm up your upper body. Well, in today's episode, I'm going to take you through the UMS Ultimate Upper Body Warm-Up Routine. And yes, I did use the word ultimate. We have tried so many different things, and I honestly believe in my heart that this is the best way to warm up your upper body. Now, if you get this wrong, you can either injure yourself, or you can just take way too long, or you can just not prepare yourself properly for the workout. So make sure you stick around right to the end because I'm gonna reveal the biggest mistake people make when warming up their body. All that. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hi, in case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. I am the co-founder of Unity Gym and the co-creator of the UMS, Unify Movement System, formerly known as the FMS, where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. And for those of you that tune in regularly, you will notice that I still don't have my brother here, Yanni. Uh, and that is because he is knee deep in our renovations. We've decided to plow through. We've got a couple more things to get done and we're gonna do a big reveal for you guys. Um, last week we did get Phil's physio and massage room fully done. He's going to be up and running tomorrow. He's just getting a couple of plants and stuff in there today. So that is very, very exciting. Um, any of you in Sydney that want to get the best sports massage uh, you've ever had, and I honestly mean that. I've been a personal trainer for 16 years. I have gone to so many different sports masseuses around, and Phil is by far the best by a long shot, and he's also an amazing physiotherapist. So look out for that. Now, today I am going to take you guys through the upper body warm-up that we do in our UMS. I'm going to take you out there right now, take you through it, and then I'm going to answer any of your questions. And make sure you stick around, because even if you know this routine, I'm going to talk you through the most critical parts of a warm-up, why you do it, how you make it most effective, and how you can get it done in exactly 10 minutes. Come on out. Let's go. Hey, Rad, just one sec. Can you test the sound on your computer? Oh, Richard's telling me to test the sound on my computer. It's all good. Sorry, guys. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Richie had a little bit of a technical issue. Anyway, so you can hear me, which is great. We're going to get out on the gym floor now. And what I'm going to do, so there's a couple of critical components to a warm-up. The first thing that you're going to do is uh, one minute, 60 seconds of high-intensity interval training. So um, I won't go through the warm-up as 10 minutes, but we get this done in exactly 10 minutes. We put a timer on, and there's five two minute rounds. So the first one we do is uh, cardio. So what we do is horizontal running. This is a really good one. You can also do squat jumps like this. You can also do burpees. Okay. Anything that really gets your heart rate up. Once we've done one minute, 60 seconds of that, the heart rate's right up. We move into spinal mobilization. And we have different stuff for beginners to seniors, okay, senior students. But because uh, I've been doing this for a while, I can just so to go through this stuff and do some pretty cool spinal mobilization. So I'll do my neck. Okay, we do all this different stuff. We do like, for beginners, this is the first one we get everybody to do. We do spinal peels like this. So you, you've got 31 vertebrae in your spine. We want to get movement in all of them. This is a really good way for a beginner to get used to it. Okay, so. That station goes for two minutes, one minute of cardio, one minute of spine mobilization. Now we do two minutes of wrist prep. So the first thing we do is a couple of stretches, okay? And actually I shouldn't say that, it's not stretching, it's mobility, because what I'm doing here is you can see I'm not holding a stretch, I'm actually mobilizing my joints. I'm taking my joint through full range of motion, okay? And uh, in our UMS online coaching, of course, we break all of this down and explain exactly how to do it with all the finer points, but I'm just um, going through it with you guys so you don't get bored. Okay, so this is all the stuff we do. Now what we do is um, strengthening exercises. So this is a really critical part of a warm-up. You need to mobilize the joints, but then you also need to switch on the central nervous system's ability to contract the muscles really nice and fast. So now that we've mobilized the wrist, now we're gonna create, uh, or we're gonna switch on uh, the, the strength system. So from here, I'm gonna do first knuckle push-ups. These are ridiculously hard to do on your feet the way I'm doing it. I had to work very, very hard for a long time to be able to get that strength. And then we do wrist push-ups. You can do these on your feet as well, of course. And then we do fingertip push-ups. 
So this is all just telling the body that we're about to do a strength training session. We're not stretching, we're warming up for strength training. Okay? Just doing all these different positions that switch on all the different muscles in my forearms and wrists. Okay, now we do elbow circles where we flick the arms straight and then circle inward. And we do this, the outward flicking motion as fast as possible. Then we change directions. The reason why we do this is because the elbow goes through the fastest extension out of any joint in the body through movement. When you, you know, if you're, if you're bench pressing or bicep curling or um, if, I mean, if you talk about sporting activity, if you throw a ball or swing with a bat, the elbow is what goes through the fastest movement. Okay, so that's why we do that. Then we do closed kinetic chain elbow circles. So I put my hands on the ground, circle my arms, and this is a closed kinetic chain because the end of my limb is staying still whilst the rest of, uh, so the inner part of my limb is moving. Okay, so that's the second station. The second station is all about the wrists and the forearms or the elbows. Now we go to the third station and this is, um, this is where we grab a band, one of these bands. And this is uh, unreal. This, this part of the warm up has just made such a difference for us at Unity Gym. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Okay, so from here, I like to put this at shoulder height like this. Okay, circle my arms around it so you don't, this is just a TheraBand, you can get them on YouTube or Amazon. I'll get Yanni to put a link in the description here where you can get them. Okay, now from here, what I'm going to do, I'm letting the, I'm going to a point where the bands are really pulling my arms back. So now what I've got, got to do is watch my hips and my core. I'm going to draw my stomach in and I'm going to uh, activate my glutes to get my posture right. And then I'm going to pull forward just a little bit and then do small circles forward with my arms as my arms come up. Okay, now I'm going to change directions with the circles as my arms go down. Okay, now I'm going to pulse back and forward as my arms come up. And what I'm doing is just switching on the muscles in all of the different positions. This is really, really good for your rotator cuff as well. Okay, rotating now, big circles going through. So watch my shoulders, I'm protracting, depressing, retracting and elevating, but I'm just doing it in a smooth motion. Now I'm gonna change directions. Okay, and now I'm gonna do internal rotation. So from here, I'm gonna rotate inward like this. Then I'm going to turn around, and now, of course, I'm pulling back. So now I'm uh, doing exactly the same thing, but all of the muscles on the posterior portion of my shoulder. So it's exactly the same. I circle up. I'll speed this up a little bit so we get through this quicker. Normally, I'd take a little bit more time. Okay, it's the same thing. And big circles forward, and then big circles backwards. Okay, and then to finish off, external rotation. We did internal rotation before, now external rotation. So we do that for two minutes and we, we literally, we have a timer that's on and it beeps every two minutes. So this takes exactly 10 minutes. Then we go to the rings. Oops. Sorry, I pulled my microphone down. Now we go to the gymnastics rings and with the gymnastics rings, there's only two things that we do. I won't do one of them today because I haven't set up the gymnastics rings at the right height, but I'll show you the first one. So this is called uh, an RTO hold, ring turned out hold. So at the basic level, what we're doing is just gonna push down and at a more advanced level, we're gonna turn the rings out and hold for as long as you can. One max set, but only going to about 80%. And the reason why your warm up is, to, is there to prepare you for a workout. It shouldn't fatigue you. So you shouldn't finish the warm up and feel like you need to take a break before you do your first set. So those RTO holds are amazing. They're such a good movement um, because it, it really activates the muscles um, in a stabilization way in the shoulders, also in the elbows and wrists as well. It's an amazing movement. Um, what we do for beginners is we do a German hang where you come behind like this. These rings are way too low for me, so I'd normally have the rings much higher and hang like this. And for the more senior uh, members, we do skin the cat. So you, you, know, you do your full skin the cat like this, but I won't bother stuffing around 
height, um, changing the height of the rings, but we do uh, reps of skin the cat there. And then for the last part of the warm up, we do, so that station goes for two minutes. So we've got two minutes to do um, both of those ring positions. Then we come down um, to the ground and we do core activation. So a critical component of any warm up from what we believe in is core um, activation. So we're not training the core. We're not doing sets where we're trying to build strength. What we're doing is trying to switch on the central nervous system into activating the core and getting it ready for exercise. Because there's, at least when you do calisthenics, there's nothing that you do that doesn't involve the core. And when you do proper weightlifting, you know, like squatting and benching and deadlifting and things like that. I'm not talking about, you know, the, the big um, cookie cutter gyms with all the machines. There's a lot of stuff in there that you do that doesn't involve the core. But what we do, everything involves the core. So the first thing we do is the hollow body position. So we hold this for 15 seconds and we have a buzzer that goes off every 15 seconds. Got to make sure I don't roll over the microphone here. And then from here we do a side dish where what I'm doing here is I'm using my obliques. I'm touching my ear to the shoulder. I'm keeping my elbows straight and I'm trying to lift my arms and legs up like that. And then I go into my stomach and I do the arch body where here all I'm doing is not bending my knees, I'm lifting my legs just a little bit, but using my glutes, my posterior core, and then I'm lifting my arms up as high as I can and externally rotating, and then I do the other side, like this, okay? So each one of those we go for 15 seconds, and then the last thing we do in our warm-up is just to hang. So nothing fancy about this. We just do a passive hang like this, and you can either do a passive hang from a pronated grip like what I'm doing, or you can also do a supinated grip. And that's it. Exactly 10 minutes for the full warm-up. Now come on back in here, if you've, uh, and I'll talk you through a few things, a few finer points. Now if you've just tuned in, uh, put a little comment here, uh, let me know your name and where you're watching from, and any questions that you guys have about what we're going through today, or really anything that we do here, um, put them in the comments box, but especially about the warm-ups. Okay, let's have a look. What have I got here? Morning, Quok. Morning, Jeremiah. And morning, Lee. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this 10-minute warm-up, uh, this is for upper body. Uh, Lee, that's right. So this is an upper body warm-up routine. So a couple of things I want to talk to you about, what every warm-up should have. Firstly, it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. A warm-up is designed to prepare you for a workout. It's not the meat of the workout. I, I used to do warm-ups that used to take me like 45 minutes or so. And it was, you know, it's a waste of time. It's not, it's, um, you need to get to the working sets. You know, the workout is about becoming strong and flexible or whatever your goal is. The goal of the workout isn't the warm-up. The warm-up is there to prepare you for the warm-up. So that's the first thing. Warm-ups should take 10 minutes or less. The second thing is if you have any specific individual needs, then that's outside of the 10 minutes. Everybody can focus a little bit on what they need to do. So personally, my lower back is, is a real problem for me. I've, uh, I've got something called spondylolisthesis and a pars defect in my lower back causes really bad tension, especially when I wake up in the morning. And so what I do is, before I even start that, I spend about 10 minutes on a foam roller and I use a hacky sack to get in there and um, I do some inverted hanging and a bunch of things, all just designed to deal with my specific issues and prepare my body for the workout. But the actual warm up itself, and if you're a PT or you're somebody that's running classes and group training with people, 10 minutes is what you want. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that a warm up should start with high intensity uh, cardiovascular training. I, lo I love the three exercises that I did because you can scale them quite easily and they don't require any equipment, you, in any equipment, you can do them anywhere. But it's just, the idea is that at the end of that 60 seconds, you should be seriously out of breath. And there's a lot that goes on when your heart rate elevates. When the heart rate elevates, it sends, it creates a stress response in the body. The body releases, um, you know, it gets into fight or flight mode. It, it prepares itself for the work that's going to come. And what happens is, um, the, as the heart rate increases, the, the arteries expand and become more elastic, which means that we get increased blood circulation. Of course, the, blood, the heart's pumping faster, so it starts pumping more blood, which is really important because at rest, you don't have great blood circulation to your extremities, so down into your hands and your feet. 
um, the blood circulation is prioritized into your organs and your brain when you're at rest. So that's really important. We need to increase the circulation to our extremities. The, and the next thing that happens is that it increases something called cr the speed of cross bridge coupling. Cross bridge coupling refers to there's, there's two types of um, fibers in a muscle fiber. There's two types of, um, there's the actin and the myosin. And what happens is they sit separate from each other and they sit on, on top of each other in something called, and, and what I'm about to describe is something called the sliding filament theory. So what happens is they sit on top of each other like this, stacked up, and they hook onto each other um, by something cr called cross bridge coupling. And once they hook on, they then shorten, and it's that shortening that causes a muscle contraction. So the speed at which the cross bridge coupling happens and this it dictates how powerful and how fast your muscle contractions are going to be. So that, that process speeds up when you're warmed up. So you get faster and more powerful muscle contractions. You also get um, more viscosity in the synovial fluid in the joints. So that's the fluid that basically lubricates the joints and lubricates the cartilage um, and prevents it, um, injuries basically. So it's like when you start an engine in a car, when you start your car in the morning, um, most of us have heard this idea that you should let your car run for a minute or so before you drive off because all the, um, uh, all the oil is sitting at the bottom of the sump in the motor and we need to get it you know, going through all the chains and all the cogs and everything needs to be um, lubricated before we start driving. So that same thing happens within our joints. So there's a lot that goes on from the cardiovascular component. The next thing that, you're, uh, that happens when you, want, when you increase your... Sorry, what, I've, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so the next thing that a the good warm-up should have is that the joints that you're going to use in the workout should be taken through mobility. Now, mobility is different to flexibility. Mobility is where you take your joints through their full range of motion. It is not stretching. It's usually done with movement, and it's usually done at a much lower intensity than flexibility training. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing an upper body or a lower body warm-up, it always starts with the spine for us because the spine is used in, in any human movement you're using the spine. So that's why we always do um, spine straight away. Then we do for upper body, we do obviously elbow, uh, shoulders, elbows and wrists. And you saw me do that in this video. I went through, well, I actually did it in the opposite order. I went wrists, elbows, shoulders. So that means from my hips up, every single joint in my body from my hips up is now um, gone through mobility. Then the next thing that a good warm up has is strengthening movements for the same thing for, for all the joints that you're using. So what I did was mobility and strengthening. Um, that, that's a really important part because we're telling the, the central nervous system, we're telling the body to get ready for strength work, to brace ourselves. We're about to put it through some serious stress. Um, and then the next thing that a good warm-up has is core activation. We went through that at the end. Every warm-up should, um, should have a little bit of core activation going on because we use the core in every workout, in every um, uh, body weight exercise and good weightlifting movement. The core is, uh, is a part of that. And what we like to do as well in, in every warm-up is a tiny little bit of hanging at the end. Um, that's really, really good because it takes the shoulders into full flexion and just gets, and also it just, it just um, decompresses all the joints in the body. So all the joints get, um, you know, uh, warmed up and ready for the, for the workout that's to come. And then in an upper body workout, we also really like the RTO hold and the skin the cat. The skin the cat's really good because it takes your shoulders to their full extremity. So you go from full flexion right through to full extension and you do it under load where the muscles are having to work to get you there. It's not passive, it's not done passively. So Skin the Cat's really good and the RTO is really good because it's, it switches on the rotator cuff and all the muscles right down the arm and, and, and the shoulders, other muscles in the shoulders as well, not just the rotator cuff and, and really stay, uh, gets it ready for stability work. So. In all honesty, I've never seen a better upper body warm up than what I just showed you. And if I had, and, and I've learned from a lot of good people, um, Yanni and I, to, to come up with that warm up routine. And it works really, really well. Um, it's uh, easily the fastest way that I've ever um, had to warm up. The
that prepares my body for the workout that I'm about to do better than anything else. So I hope you guys um, that aren't part of the UMS online coaching program, I hope you got something out of that. Now let's have a look at the uh, questions here. If anybody's just tuned in, please um, type your name and let me know where you're watching from in the comments box so I can say hi to you. And if you have any questions about warming up or anything that we've gone through recently, please put them in the comments section. So let's have a look. Uh, so Lee, I did answer that question, is this 10 minute warm up just for shoulders? It's not just for shoulders, it's for upper body work. Any, so we have um, at, in the UMS, in the Unified Movement System, we do Monday bent arm strength, Tuesday lower body, Wednesday straight arm strength, Thursday bent arm strength, Friday lower body, Saturday bent arm strength. Um, sorry, straight arm strength. So for both the bent arm and straight arm strength sessions, which means four workouts a week, that's the exact warm up that we do. Hope that helps. Um, and Jeremiah is saying, how do people respond performing high intensity training out the gate? Um, very well, <laughs> they hate it, <laughs> of course. Um, you gotta understand, man, it's uh, the exercises that we've chosen are very safe. They're not, they have a very low risk of injury and we've got ways of scaling them. But if you're talking about, you know, um, people that have contraindications, you can do the same thing with, uh, you know, a stationary cycle if, you're, if you have one or a rowing machine. Um, there's, there's a lot of safe ways that you can do high intensity training. Um, and there's contraindications for everyone, right? So there's, a, there's something else that I should have added. The older you get, the, the longer you need to warm up for. So people that are younger, they don't need to warm up as much. So if you were in your maybe 50s pushing 60s, I'd probably say you'd want to add another two to five minutes onto your, or two to three minutes onto your warm up. Um, and then 60s, 70s, another five minutes to your warm up. So it's gonna change for everyone. And where the majority of that time would come from, I would say would be on the high intensity training at the start. Um, the older you get, I would, I would slowly ramp up the intensity of that cardio at the start um, over anywhere from one to three minutes probably. Um, maybe even, you know, in certain situations, I'd even go up to five or six minutes. So I uh, hope that answers your question. Um, good morning, Karina. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Jeremiah is saying, I have a four corner fusion in my left wrist. Ring holds are a bit hard due to lack of range of motion in my left wrist. Right. Can you, are you saying that to do an RTO hold where you, where you turn the rings out is hard or even just putting the weight in your arms and pushing down like the first progression I showed is hard. Let me know, Jeremiah. Um, and Jeremiah is saying again, have you seen this type of injury in your facility and do you have anything you recommend that could help me get to where ring holds and dips become a reality? So the injury, let me read that again, man. Um, you have a four corner fusion. I've never heard of that before, man, um, to be honest. So it might be called something else um, but if you want to just clarify that for me I've, I've never heard of that before so I'm not sure what it is you must add you have no extension in the wrist and 90 okay all right so, you've, so you can't go through extension at all but and you've got 90 percent of flexion okay so that's tough man not being able to go into extension at all that's going to dramatically um, reduce your ability to do a lot of things but this is this is what you need to do when everybody's got different injuries. In all honesty, I've got some pretty bad injuries in my body. If you knew some of the stuff that I've happened, you know, most recently I've had this slap tear in my right shoulder, a torn supraspinatus, fluid in the bursa and degenerative joint disease through the shoulder. If you looked at the MRI, it was pretty bad. But I, here I am five months later, probably made a, maybe a 90% recovery and I've just started reintroducing barbell work and all of the big heavy lifts and now I'm progressively overloading. And I'm able to do that because of my obsessive nature with just being the best that I can be. And that's the only thing that I can put down to um, my success. You know, I'm 41 years old. Most people that are my age that have had an injury like what I've had and like a lot of the things that I've had in my body, for a lot of people, that, that b b defines them, like it becomes the end of them, you know, they, they, their best days are behind them. And I just don't like to subject, sub submit myself to that thought process. I don't ever think that anything is um, how it is. Like, I, like it's not, you can't tell me that I can't do something just because an MRI says that or just because my joint won't go there. I will work and be the best that I can be. So as far as your... Um, 
your risk goes, um, Jeremiah, you need to find what you can do. Now, if you can't go into any extension at all, I think you can still do a, a, a ring hold. The, the biggest problems that you're going to suffer with are all of the um, wrist warm up that I did on the floor. But you can get down on the floor and do the, um, you know, the best that you can do. Like your goal, you, you, for you, I'd be spending probably five minutes just on the wrist mobility work. And I'd do that probably three times a day, to be honest. So that's, that's my, my attitude is whatever my weakest link is, I obsess over it. I absolutely obsess over it and turn it into my strongest link. And if you guys knew the pain and the discomfort and the problems that I've had in my lower back, like I shouldn't be able to do a press to handstand because I have such poor forward flexion in my spine. And, and you know, even as I'm talking, I'm reminding myself to sit with better posture. But you, when you, if you approach it the way I do, you, you change everything in your life. Like my most, and I never settle for this is as good as it's gonna get. My most recent development is I've looked at my training and I think, wow, I don't know if I could do much more with my training, but I wake up every morning with a really stiff back. So I'm gonna try sleeping differently. So now I'm forcing myself to sleep on my back, which is very, very hard for me. I find it very hard to fall asleep on my back. But the, since I've been doing it for the last week, I wake up with much less stiffness in my back because when I sleep on my side, my back goes into extension. And so I was just thinking, oh, well, if my back's in extension, then it's exacerbating my problems because I'm laying there for six or seven hours. So that's the level of obsession I'm talking about. You have to look at what is like everything that you can do in your that's in your control, within your power. Like I'm talking about changing your diet, you know, researching what kind of foods cause inflammation. Um, you've got to go so deep into it. So I um, hope that helps, man. Um, Lee Clements, so being 67 years, I need to warm up for about 15 to 20 minutes total. I'm not going to put an exact amount of time on it, Lee. I'm going to say that you need to warm up longer than I do, okay? So I'm not your age yet. I, don't ex I can't tell you how long you need to warm up for, but I would definitely be, what I would be doing is I wouldn't be rushing through it as quickly as I do in 10 minutes. I wouldn't be putting a time stamp on it like that. I'd see how long it would take. I wouldn't take more than 20 minutes, but again, you need to explore this yourself. So I would say yes, between 15 and 20 minutes. I would definitely do more in a cardio training at the start and I would ramp it up slowly. I wouldn't go into it full health of leather like I do. Um, and then, yeah, spend, um, if anything feels like you need a bit more time on it, spend a bit more time on it. Um, and Lee's saying, Rad, you do inspire. Thanks, man, I really appreciate that. Um, I think one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people enjoy what Yanni and I do is that we're quite authentic with what we do. We don't pretend that we're gurus that know everything and, and, and are better than everybody at it. And I think that's really important. Um, I, I think some of the best people, some of, some of the people that are the most skilled in the world, not all of them, but a lot of them, I've found to be the worst teachers because they're so far disconnected from what the journey is like for a beginner. And Yanni and I have made a real point of trying to stay connected to what the journey is like for a beginner, people that are way behind us. And I think that's why we're able to deliver this information to you guys in a way that you enjoy it. Now, uh, we've got to get ready for um, our classes that we teach at lunchtime. It's um, 20 to 12 here in Australia. Tune in tomorrow because tomorrow I'm going to take you through the lower body warm up, the ultimate lower body warm up routine. And it is very, very cool. We do some really funky stuff. There's some Kung Fu inspired movement that I do in there um, that's really, really good that a lot of our members love and that is amazing at warming up your body and getting you ready for lower body workouts. So tune in for that tomorrow. Any questions, if any of you guys have any questions that are watching this video when it's not live, put them in the comments box um, section and I'll answer them for you tomorrow. So anything at all. And before I go, Karina's got a quick question. What time do you train each day? Um, I am all or nothing, Karina. You are absolutely right. I don't believe in doing anything half-assed. Um, I've only got 24 hours in a day and it's not even close to being enough for me. I train from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. every day and I am rushed to get everything that I want to get done. I wish that I 
had time to do two two hour training sessions a day, uh, maybe even two, maybe one two and a half hour and and one two hour session. But right now, unfortunately, with the way my life is and the way that we uh, run our business, I don't have that time. I look forward to having that hopefully in another year or two with the way that Yanni and I are setting up the business. So hopefully that's going to work out for me. Um, Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I really appreciate it. Love the love. Love the interaction that we're getting from you guys. And I will see you tomorrow at the same time. Have a great day. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.